Uh, we'll call the meeting to order. Thank you for coming tonight. Please call the roll. Mayor Patricelli. Present. Councilman Tornsello. Present. Councilwoman Bud. Present. All right, we'll let, ask everybody to scale. We'll say pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Now, maybe before I uh, begin tonight, I'd like to ask you just for a moment of silence to recognize the uh, the, the, what the poor people in the Ukraine are going through right now, um, and let's pray for their uh, safety and maybe a resolution to this. So I'll ask everybody just to take a moment of silence. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, I'll uh, tonight. I have. I have pre-recorded the uh, State of the City address um, for the year for 2021. I have the, the address here in front of me, but I, I don't feel uh, that I need to reread re the, the full address. But I do want to say I, I have to, a uh, couple of highlights I'd like to just mention, and then we can, uh, uh, anybody who wants to, it'll be on, um, I'll have it on the city website, the YouTube uh, link uh, for the, the entire address. Um, it's certainly worth a, a little uh, cocktail or two, uh, so uh, enjoy. Uh, but first, I want to make sure that I thank everybody who's been part of the, the team in 2021. 2020 was certainly a, a busy year. 2021, you know, certainly was just as busy uh, fighting the, uh, the, the, let's say, the issues of, of COVID, um, and then still trying to maintain and do business. Um, financially, you know, briefly, you know, it's more in the, in the description of the, on the, um, on the video, but, you know, we've done very well. Um, we've made some hard decisions. The decisions still continue to be hard, you know, hard to be made, but we need to make some more that, you know, will, let's say, keep the city on a straight financial path. I know Amanda is, um, you know, I see when we have these meetings, uh, Amanda's face will turn, you know, and say, eh, I don't know if we should be doing that. But I appreciate Amanda's candor and um, her honesty and being able to keep us focused um, and keep us all on track. But financially, we're doing very, very well. A um, couple of the items we did with the computer system getting reimbursed, we're planning on going forward with the LED street lighting. Um, we did uh, uh, interview or I guess uh, selected a contractor that we'll approve tonight. Um, and you know we'll go forward with the uh, NED. The energy performance contract, which is basically um, the majority of it, is conversion of the street lights to LED and purchasing of them from uh, National Grid. Uh, as far as businesses are concerned, um, one of the things that uh, I know this council and us have been really focusing on is uh, is businesses, trying to make sure that our businesses are kept healthy um, and profitable. Um, it's the backbone of the city. It's what we need. We don't need to have. Uh, you know our, our main corridors with vacant buildings or you know in some senses blight um, but we're, we're working very hard to keep them bus more business friendly uh, we, we know that there are certain things that need to be um, let's say adjusted you know how we do business but I think we're doing very very well on that um, well the other thing is, is coming this Sunday is uh, the second restaurant week uh, which is entirely something that we kind of supported and spearheaded to be able to have the restaurants um, get more, you know, more business and more recognition, uh, you know, throughout. Uh, last year was basically in, in response more to the COVID, but this year I think it's more of an economic boost and a recognition. Of it. You know, I think they're, I think they're healthy, and I think they appreciate, you know, what, what we've been doing for them. Code, uh, we still continue to work hard on code. I know we're, we've been talking about some of the the issues that we've had with our past. Um, uh, code compliance, but we're working very diligently on making updating our code to make it more responsive, fair for the, uh, the you know for both the tenants and the landlords and the homeowners, and making that as part of the uh, our uh, let's say our stabilization of our neighborhoods. That's one of. Them. As far as DPW is concerned, we've uh, we've actually uh, reevaluated and turned over our our fleet. Um, we made some major improvements to our fleet. We uh, purchased a couple of new trucks put some plows on existing trucks, purchase some more equipment that we needed, um, and I appreciate the work that DPW of Albany County has done to help us with kind of like 
given us a little bit of a, let's say, a lesson in what we need and how we need to use it and, and that kind of thing. Because I think it's always good to hear from you know from uh, the others on what they can do. Um, it, we we still fully intend to go forward with the uh, the. Town of Colony and repaving Eighth Avenue. Um, again, it's a, a way of sharing those services and working together with our neighbors. Uh, so that's something that we still need to do. We will have a bulk day um, at Hudson Shores Park and Electronics Recycling Day, and that'll be more, let's say, more detailed uh, when the time comes. But we plan a new event in May. As I mentioned before, uh, energy has been a, a top priority. We'll be doing the LED lights and the street lights, but also. We, we are going to be working to, to, let's say, to watch what we consume here as a, as a city um, and also how we can keep our, let's say, our energy bills in check uh, to be more responsive and maybe monitor more. Um, in addition to that, we've, we are now fully operational with 12 uh, electric vehicles. Um, I was at the county nursing home to just today and saw an electric vehicle with um, you know all plugged in that was part of Albany County and I'll be asking Dan McCoy for the keys tomorrow um, so don't don't give them the uh, heads up yet but those, those you know those are uh, you know those are something that we plan on doing the electric vehicles are certainly a part of the future and the price of gas going to from four to five to six dollars a gallon now uh, certainly makes it uh, more worthwhile our fire department has uh, has again exceeded its expectations. It's a, you know professionalism. They responded to 20, 2,500 calls. I believe I was told that's the most that they've ever had. Five structure fires, and uh, we've assisted mutual aid 18 times. Um, you know, there's again that'll be more detailed in the uh, in the video presentation. But you know, they did have a few big major structure fires. One of them, you know, we lost three homes. Uh, we had to raise those three homes, and 12, uh, 12 individuals were displaced. Uh, the city raised, um, you know, spearheaded a campaign to raise some money for those, um, those the fire victims, and we were able to stimulate some of that money to, or that money to them. Um, the police department, uh, we welcomed uh, Chief Centeni in March. Uh, we swore in Chief Centeni, um, and he leads a fully manned department now of 26 men, um, and we are. You know, very proud of the way that the department has been heading. We fully support the police and their efforts. They've uh, done excellent work on um, on some new, you know, traffic violations. For example, pulling over uh, a number of cars, making 13 firearms or recovering 13 firearms right off of those uh, uh, those stops, which is uh, phenomenal. Um, and also, in addition to that, was that we had the gun buyback program, which another 30 guns were taken off the streets. Maybe not maybe uh, handguns, but there were 30 guns that were turned in, and which is very good. Another major highlight, again, with the with the department was the uh, or the resource officer at the high school. With again, it's a um, a feather in the cap to get that back on. I believe communications between the uh, the police and the kids. You know themselves is a, is a win-win. Um, I think that's certainly um, uh, keeping keeping the doors open on both counts is, is really well. Uh, well. Um, the chief has put the, together his own report, um, and that'll be a part of this that will make part of the whole um, you know state of the city. And, and he details much more detail than I have here. Um, we are also going to have a bike registration program coming up in the spring. Um, where we can register bikes and keep them, you know, keep an inventory of those for you know, people if there's lost or stolen. Uh, water and sewer. Uh, you'll hear a little bit about water and sewer about it, but we know that water and sewer is very important to the city residents. It's one of our biggest resources. Um, the reservoir in the town of Gilliland is uh, is certainly something that we need to keep an eye on. We've been working hard with uh, the getting the FERC license. Uh, this will be a 40-year license, I believe. It's uh, are we. You know, I believe I can honestly say I think we're ready to have that finalized and, and, uh, and going. Um, so that was a, a negotiation for over two years of, of hard work, and I commend uh, Dave Dressel and, and Joe on, on we're getting that to uh, this final phase. Um, we are still in the final negotiations, or I should say, the hopefully in the final steps of our uh, tax uh, lawsuit with the town of Gilliland. Um, we will be looking to uh, have that come to the court and make a decision on that. Uh, one of the other things that I can honestly say was a, a, a worthwhile uh, say accomplishment was the purchase of our harvester so that we can actually uh, uh, clean some of that water chestnuts out of the, out of the reservoir. So, 
We uh, also have a couple of grants going on with the filtration plant, the combined sewer. Um, so those items will also be worked on this coming year. Um, parks, again, is, uh, is something that I believe is, uh, is let's say, the, uh, uh, the kingpin here in the, in the city. I don't know if you can have a city and a community and then enjoy a community unless you have parks and parks that people can actually go to and enjoy. Um, COVID kind of put a damper on our Memorial Day Parade and some other activities, but we were able to still run uh, the Arsenal City Run. We had a very successful Hudson Shores uh, antique car show, a Halloween event that, you know, that was really uh, uh, well, you know, well attended at the schools. Um, we gathered at the Arsenal for, um, or, at, or at the Elks Club for a 9-11 ceremony. And one of the other big things that you know we've been able to accomplish, and you can see it right over here at the pool, was the spray pool, which is being you know uh, being built as we speak with a grant from um, uh, Scott Earl for with a, uh, for five hundred thousand um, dollars. The Waterville Charitable Foundation gave us a considerable um, a gift uh, on giving us uh, the uh, the money for the uh, the Sin Memorial Bell Park, which I think is the, let's say, it's a focal point now, people coming and going out of the city and seeing the Memorial Park and looking at that and having, having that, let's say, uh, stand out. And it's a beautiful, let's say, um, memorial to our, you know, our commitment or our, let's say, our part in the Industrial Revolution here in the city. Um, and I want to thank John Rosano for that. Um, again, I was uh, maybe a little bit late tonight in, in coming because I was in the final discussions uh, with uh, the Waterloo Charitable Foundation. Um, we just received some um, prices on, um, on a playground at Clinton Park, and, um, and the prices was, let's say, um, let's say acceptable. So we've talked to, um, uh, the committee went to, we were talking with John Rosano tonight, and we've agreed to pay for two parks, uh, two playground pieces, one for Clinton Park and the other one for 15th Street Park. Um, so that money is, uh, is being allocated. We'll talk more about that later and how we go about it. But, um, but I, I'm proud to say that that's uh, two more things that we've got coming. I think 15th Street Park is great. It'll, it'll supplement the pool, you know, the you know, kids being able to go back and forth or whatever they want to do, but it'll be a, a nice little improvement for them. Um, I can't t say enough about the uh, people who have been involved in the tree committee. Um, the work that they've been able to do to get some of the grants that we've uh, accomplished with National Grid. We got 100 trees. Uh, they put on, a, they, they uh, have a, a 40 trees that they had memorial plaques for that will be, that money was, uh, will be reinvested into another trees. And, you know, the, the work that they've been doing is phenomenal, um, keeping our tree inventory and our stock in, in line. Uh, the residents of, of Waterlead has been, let's say, phenomenal in the sense of uh, their, their, their participation. One of the events was the uh, Sleep in Heavenly Peace event that uh, we did at the Dome, making 45 beds. Um, was, you know, and, and actually going out as, you know, even the three of us or anybody else can go out and join them, but going out, putting a bed together, after, you know, and after, for some of those kids in their own home and watching them jump on the bed and play on it is, you know, I use the word priceless. So I, I think that's, you know, something else that we uh, uh, can say, you know, we've been really supportive on. So in, in final, in, in, again, in final, what I'd like to say is, um, you know, we've been working very hard to get things moving. Uh, we've been working a lot with um, you know, people at Hudson Shores uh, Park to work on, uh, on getting that tour boat in, working on the docks, getting those docks together, um, they, you know, the, for the kayaks, maybe even possibly for the tour boat working. We still have some um, work to do on, the, on getting the restaurant in place, but I think we're actually in, a, in good shape to, um, to keep, you know, keep some things going. So I'm very proud of the accomplishments that we, we made in 2021, and I can see uh, the work being continued on in 2022. I want to thank everybody that's helped put this all together. This is not a one-man show, not a three-man show up here, or anything else like this. This is everybody. Um, but this is every man, woman, and even child and the, you know, that's been volunteering, helping out, or employed here. So I want to thank everybody for a, a great 2021. We are not perfect. We have work that we have to do. Um, we can always improve on ourselves, and we are always looking forward for that improvement. And again, I ask anybody out there who's watching this, they want to be involved, um, come see us, and I'll put you to work. So uh, thank you, and that's my uh, little small presentation, and appreciate everybody for listening. Uh, after that, I'll uh, 
we'll go into uh, reports of uh, officers and committees. Joe? Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor. Uh, I have with me tonight uh, Dave Gressel, who heads our uh, water department for the City of Water Belief. Uh, you have received a letter uh, from myself uh, that we penned together with the Department, the, the Albany County Department of Health, uh, regarding the trihalomethanes, uh, the levels within our water system. Uh, I asked Dave here tonight if you have any questions uh, as to how we got here and what our plan is uh, to move forward with it. Uh, the impact um, right now, as the testing has been done, is in the Fenimore Trace and Highland area. Uh, also includes portions of um, Hillside Drive. Hillside Drive. It was one. So <coughs> yeah, wanna, let, I'll have Dave. Uh, Just be cloud, Dave, so that we can, okay. if, if, at least if it's being recorded, we can hear it. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you want to start with questions or. One of the reasons we're here is because our, the level went over a, a, a weighted average over four testing periods. Um, 80 is the number, correct, David? Yep. And then after and we hit at 82 uh, during this last um, with the summary, you know, with the weighted average, whereby we then were in contact with Department of Health. Uh, we drafted a letter, a letter uh, to block all the residents affected um, with some of our corrective actions. This is the first time it's uh, happened uh, in, what, seven years? I think it was, or six years? Six or seven years ago. Um, Dave, why don't you explain what, what they are mm -hmm. and what causes them? So try out how methanes and HA5s is kind of another um, part of it. Um, Speak louder, Dave. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Trihalomethanes and HA5s are a disinfectant byproduct um, that's considered contaminant by the Department, Department of Health. Um, we do testing every quarter at uh, two locations in the city that was predetermined by the Department of Health. One of them is Fenimore Trace Apartments, and the other one is uh, Brotherhood, the Little League Park. Um, so I do, like I said, I do quarterly testing. Um, what trihalomethane is, is is when the chlorine in the water that we use to disinfect the water reacts with the organic material that comes from the water, mostly from the reservoir, um, the, sor the source coming in. Um, when they react, when, when the chlorine reacts with the organic matter, it creates a, a THM um, that so typically is higher in the summer because that's when the growth the growth period is water chestnuts um, but like I said it's a rolling average that we do um, it has to stay under 80 and um, after our January test um, our, our average was at 82.8 so we were just barely over um, so that prompts us to, to send out this letter what, what's it what's it usual is it usually in the high 70s or 60 or something um, like that? Or? yeah so um, sort of what's just kind of a quick rough average in 2020 um, for the whole year 2020 it was in the 50s. Okay. Um, in 2019 it was 59, 53. Um, 2018 it was 70 and 60. Okay. So 50s, you know, there, there's always going to be THMs in your water, no matter what, because you have to disinfect the chlorine. Um, some municipalities are low because their source water has low organic matter, and you know, they can get away with it. Other sources, um, just for instance, uh, Gilderland had issues with it last year. Uh, Town of Bethlehem had issues with it last year. So we're not the only municipality that comes up against this. Um, it's typically from surface water reservoirs um, is, is are the ones that usually have higher, higher uh, THMs. You say because a lot of it has to do with the water chestnuts? Yeah, that, that is... Again, so is the use of the, in your opinion, is the use of the harvester gonna, gonna help this problem? Yes, it not, it, we won't see it in July. No. Um, you know, because we'll the amount of... You won't see it for years. Yeah, it's gonna be a few years, I think, before you actually see the benefit, because we got so much of it. All right. We got 360 acre reservoir, 180 acres of it is weeds. So, so it, I remember when I, I remember six or seven years ago or whatever, we got a similar letter. Yeah. Residents of Hillside and Wiswell got a similar letter, and then it sort of just went away. We didn't. We we forgot. I, you know, I, I think I asked a question a few years ago on the council, and it was it wasn't a problem. What did we do back then to make to lower it, and are we doing that again now? So so back then, or are we going um, to do that? I guess. So back then was a little bit different. Um, the system. So the reason why only 
portion of the city got the letter is, is because the Fenimore Trace, the um, Hillside Drive, and Wiswell Ave are kind of on your own little separate system. Um, there's a pump station that pumps. It's kind of a closed loop system. Yep. So the water in that part portion of the city doesn't intertwine with the rest of the city once, once it goes through the pump station, and that's what tested high. Um, so back seven years ago, we had, we had the pump station, we had an older pump station that was there that pumped up to the tank, the big tank on 19th Street, right. by, by the apartments. Right. Um, the THMs tend to, tend to be higher when water is stagnant and it sits for a while and it, has, it gives the chlorine time to react with the, with the organics and causes, will, will tend to cause higher THMs. So three years ago, three or four years ago, um, so when we first had the issue, when the tank was still in service, we put a mixer in the tank to help agitate the water, right. to, to, keep it, to keep it fresher. Um, and that, it seemed to help a little bit. Um, a, a lot of weather has a lot to do with this. You get a hot, long summer, um, long growth period into October, the weeds will stay growing longer, which gives you more organic matter. So I, that, that summer might have been a long, a long growing season. Like last year was, we had a lot of rain, we had a lot of, uh, you know, in, into the fall. Um, so, but four years ago, we we were looking at painting the tank. It was going to cost way more to paint paint the tank than what we ended up doing is we put a new pump station in that bypasses the tank. It's basically an on-demand pump station um, that services the same area. Um, the hope was that. And you keep the water circulating a little bit more. It's not sitting in a tank as long as being kind of like an on-demand type thing. Um, fortunately, you know, this past year, you know. It, it all right. So, what, first of all, I want to thank Dave too because when I, when we got this letter, I immediately reached out to the, ma or the general manager, and Dave Dave called me back instantly and gave me a, a you know a crash course in in TFCs, whatever. So, okay, so what are we going to do now? I mean, is, is the answer just wait and, and hope it goes down? Or is the city, or, or, you know, something, we have to be proactive in some respect, yeah. do something yep. to help yeah, so to help try to relieve it. So, so what are we going to do? In the letter, um, you know, we, I talk about the we do. It's kind of a long-term thing, but it's definitely something that will be improving our, our reservoir. Um, I'm looking at potentially um, putting a, possible an aerator in our clear well. If you aerate the water, um, that helps strip the THMs from the water. Um, but there's got to be THMs in the clear well, which is at the filter plant. So I've been doing some testing on that to see, okay. if, see if we're having an issue at the plant. And then when it goes out in the system, it gets worse. If we can help the issue at the plant, it won't be as worse down the downstream. Um, I just took some samples this week. Great. Let's see what that looks like. Um, I'm looking into maybe Change, we could maybe look at changing some of uh, maybe some chemical yeah. procedures or something. Um, so the letter was great. The letter didn't scare you because the letter said, "Look, it's not an immediate yeah, it's, emergency, right. but these are things that absolutely have to be addressed." Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, I, and so I'm, trust I'm, me, I don't want this. To no, no, no. But I'm, so I'm glad to know that you were. They were not just going to like kind of sit back and wait for the weather. You know, maybe yeah. the weather is going to get better, maybe the climate's going to change, maybe this is whatever, that we need to be doing something proactive to, you know, yeah. to solve. I'm to looking at maybe doing problem. something to the service reservoir, which is in between our main reservoir. Um, Great. I started looking at maybe putting aerators in there, okay. um, but I'm still preliminary trying to. Do you think it's wise to get, to let the residents in those areas know monthly, or excuse, quarterly, what the results are, or is that, not um, matter, or gonna, I mean, or, or all, is it just going to be a yearly, again, that rolling yearly average? Yeah, so every year I put out a water quality report. Yep. Um, it's usually, it usually has to be up by May 1st. Last year's isn't out yet. I'm actually in, this, in the mm -hmm. process of putting it together. Um, it has all our sampling data. Um, and it has, you know, it has these samples on it from the previous year. Great. Um, and then any, okay. it, it basically explains all the sampling. It'll have, it will, actually, it won't have this, it won't have this, um, not exceed it because this will be in next year's because this was in 2022 technically um but so you, might, you won't see it in this coming up report but um yeah i mean good it's all public knowledge if people want to get what the samples are we can all right and just keep i know i speak for the mayor and the council i mean just keep us posted yeah as you 
issues as, as, the next, closely, as closely as you can on issues like this. Yeah. The next sampling's in, um, in April, you know, and again, it's going to be kind of a balancing act, but, yeah. you know, it's hopefully cool. Sounds good. We talked about this a while ago, even last year, I think, yeah. that the rolling average, yeah. and actually you thought it might be an issue at some point. So. Yeah, last summer was, we had some, it was a high, high yeah. summer, so. I know. Did the other community? Did the, you said Comedy had an issue? Bethlehem have an issue? Did uh, they, Gildland. Or Gildland yeah. did, did, uh, did. Did they do anything different, or did they do anything? They're, well, so they got a little bit. Can we learn from them, or, or whatever? Yeah, I, I've talked. I've talked yeah. to Gildland a lot. Um, they kind of their system's a little bit different because they have holding tanks throughout the, the community. They have different zones, and right. they got a lot of water tanks. Okay. Um, their, their system isn't quite set up like ours, and they have because the water sits in the tank. They have issues. So we don't really have tanks anymore. Obviously, we have to clear out the plant, which we're looking at, but it's kind of a little bit different. Okay. Um, Bethlehem, I, I just, I know, I, a, I don't want to get Bethlehem, so I didn't really right. park the plant there. Right. So. right. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank yeah. you very I know uh, we also have Chief uh, Centeni here. He asked for a couple of minutes of our time uh, today to talk about uh, body worn cameras. Um, also with him as Lieutenant Strop. So, uh, Chief, if you wanted to. Take a few minutes. Just wanted to give you to everybody an update. Thanks for giving me a few minutes, Jim, Mayor, Council. Appreciate it. Um, the body worn cameras, as you, uh, for those of you who do not, do not recall, they are in place for the 2022 budget. We allotted 15 body worn cameras and 15 tasers. So, what that required. Uh, based on the proposal we made, I think it was October or November for the budget, uh, was to be collectively bargained with the union. Uh, and many of the conversations that I had with... Speak, please speak up, Chief. Oh, yep, no. With many conversations that I had with Amanda, the general manager, and even Brian Kremer, uh, it was my strong belief that we would not implement the body-worn camera program unless we were able to utilize it from A to Z. And it's pretty standard throughout the state that and it's changing the working condition has to be collectively bargained. So we did that. Um, and we successfully came up with an agreed upon policy. And in addition to that, uh, thanks to, to Brian, we put an extra layer of protection on that and have a memorandum of agreement in addition. So we are going to be able to utilize the body worn cameras from A to Z for every every possible advantage that uh, that they bring to us, so really happy about that. Uh, credit to uh, the PBA president, uh, Neil Danbury, who's very open-minded. Membership as a whole is very excited, believe it or not. Uh, you normally don't see this, this type of, this is a very significant change. One of the, it's gonna be the, the biggest change that the police department's had in many, many years. Uh, so they're open-minded. These guys are young cops, and it's what is acceptable now for these new police officers, so it's uh, pretty standard. So that's a good thing. Uh, once that was done, uh, or kind of simultaneous to that, I had Lieutenant Strzok and Sergeant Langless go out and speak to several local agencies and kind of get a feel for the infrastructure, some of the back end stuff, the technical aspects of it all. And uh, we found a lot of really, really good things. And we found a couple things. One of them brings me here to you tonight. So. Uh, program is very good. Rolling it out has its challenges. We'll have some speed bumps. I'm okay with that. But universally across the board, uh, every agency that we dealt with, and in addition to that, I've reached out to a lot of my colleagues at the Chiefs Associations, not only nationally, but uh, locally, and they have all described having a program without a camera for each cop as unmanageable a lot of reasons why. So we went back to Taser International and got a quote, the good news is, it's taken care of. There is a, a, a monetary increase. 2022 is taken care of. Again, through several meetings with Amanda and the general manager, we have the money in T88 this year to offset that cost for 2022. Um, there is a grant, a couple grants. One I applied for, a second one, the general manager, I believe the mayor, are in line to get. The general manager has been provided the most current uh, update to that, so I think that process is still moving. That would offset the vast majority of it, 
I mean, the total program, not, not this increase. This increase is about $4,873 per year, okay? So the first year, 2022, is taken care of. So the reason why, some of the background is it, it is that battery life, the data and the information that has to be downloaded, and most importantly, the unpredictability of the job. So I'll, I'll keep it very simple. 15 body-worn cameras. Let's say we don't have a spare, which is unique. Let's say we don't have a spare. Five are assigned to the day shift. Five are assigned to the afternoon shift. Five are assigned to the midnight shift. The minute we get a critical incident like we had last week or like we're having tonight, or we have a snow removal, or we have a police officer working overtime, or we have uh, fire and ice, or many of the other things that occur in the city, we knock that off kilter. So what I mean is that Officer A comes in on the day shift and he's assigned a camera. Officer A now is at the end of his shift or throughout his shift, he's really busy. And after each incident or at the end of the shift, depending, they're responsible to what's called tagging. So each incident has a certain criteria. They have to take that information and, and basically store it into the magic cloud. So that takes time. Then there's the back. So if they have a late call, now they're getting into the next shift, and officers on that shift, it, it just knocks every, it knocks the, in a perfect world, we went five, five, and five. That's great. That's not what happens, and it's only going to take us a shift or two, and everything's going to be out of whack. So, um, how many additional cameras? Ten. So we'll go from 15 to 25, so there would be a, there would be a spare. Um, and um, that is after research, speaking with Taser International, and like I said, a lot of, a lot of other, in, in, in fact, Mechanicville started out with, I believe, a different camera system altogether, and a sh what we're calling the shared program, and they are completely scrapping the program. It, it's uh, tragic, unfortunately, and they are going to Axon, and they are going one-to-one. -one. There is not one agency um, that I know of locally or throughout the country that the few that are a shared program, they are making great efforts to go one to one. So there are not a lot of agencies that have it because it just, it really, really is unmanageable. And that's the word the lieutenant and Sergeant Lang was heard throughout that entire process is it's, it's unmanageable. And after they got into the details, ultimately that was the bottom line on all of it. So you're talking guess, about one camera to one man. One one camera to one officer. So each camp, each officer is assigned. There's, there's a, there's a lot of benefits to that in addition to some of the technical stuff that I just talked about and kind of the logistics in that people in general, in particular, I'll speak specific to police officers because it's who I know best, when they are issued their own equipment, there certainly is an advantage to them and a sense of ownership and they take better care of it. It's just the reality. So they, they feel it's theirs, you're not using the battery as much, so um, it really just even has it even has a lot of advantages long term to that battery life in this particular program. So if we get two or three years into this five year program and the technology changes from Axon slash Taser International, we don't have to wait to the end of that five year. They redistribute um, the new ones or any updated programs that they have or cameras, they give them to us throughout that program. So um, that's that's my uh, discussion for tonight in relation to how 2022 will change. Now, worst case scenario, I plan for the worst and hope for the best. Let's say the grants don't work out. I don't have any information they're not, but let's say they don't. The, the increase that I would be discussing for you for the next budget cycle for next year would be the $4,873. That would be the increase. So, um, and again, there's a few things. I'm not saying we're not going to get there. I, I'm, I'm hopeful about the grants, but um, I always like to um, be right up front with you, let you know exactly where we are, and update you as, as we get the information. But this is, this really is a, it really is going to be a big thing, and for order, all of us to come together and, and get this. Uh, are they in order now? When, uh, when are you we, supposed to get them? We just extended again. I didn't, we signed the, the proposal, so it is good now until March 31st. The minute you say if this is good, we are going to start them. There is a 90-day there's a 90-day hold off on getting them because of COVID. So that's normally their turnaround to get them to us is two or three weeks. So it's 90 days. So we are not in a perfect scenario waiting the 90 days. There's a lot of work to do in between. 
but even waiting those nine days, they come out from Phoenix, Arizona, they set it up for us, we're looking at spring. So ideally, I would like to implement these before the hardcore summer months, and then we would be right, right on that edge if we, if we really get going sooner than later. So. I should ask, I should know this, but what kind of training do the officers need to do before, I mean, once they get them, there's got to be a training period, right? Yeah, yeah, it'll be, uh, the training is going to be anywhere from four to eight hours. Uh, it depends on agency and Axon when they come in. But basically, the tip of the spear is going to be Lieutenant Schrock. He's going to be the agency administrator. So he will ultimately sit with them and based on all of the needs and what is required for that usage, it'll come down. But, Pretty much across the board, you're getting agencies anywhere between four and eight hours with the training operators. And I got to add, in addition to this proposal, there's 15 new tasers too. So uh, those tasers are not one to one, but we are also remember we did the bundle bundle package and put everything together. The body more cameras in addition to new tasers. So this is a tremendous equipment, not only implementation of the cameras, but an upgrade on the technology and the tasers. So really is a, it's a really positive thing. The tasers remain the same. Tasers, the number of tasers remain the same. The number of tasers remain the same. So the change is 10 additional body more cameras from 15 to 25 with $4,873. And they're right. paid for already? And 22, 2022 is paid for. Uh, <laughs> paid for already, it sounds like we've already written the check. We haven't written the check. No, uh, but uh, so when Chief referred to T88, I'm not sure if you right. understand what that means. It's, it's seizure yeah. funds mm -hmm. Sorry uh, that, that the, the police has taken. Uh, it's just, I understand it's like a common thing. I just didn't know mm -hmm. what it was. It's common for us at City Hall. Uh, but, um, okay. so yes, there's funds in there for this year's uh, difference. The, the difference yeah. okay. Well, regardless of what the funds are in there for, could be for other things as well, but we have that money yes. that we can use for, for for the 20. I think the, the issue is whether or not we want to go for the one to one or stay with the 15. And you know, I think one to one is always you know would make sense, you know, but I, but it is $4,800 out of something that you know we could use for something, correct? You know, so but it is it so it is an additional, an no. additional it, amount. It, Specific to police. So. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Specific to police. Yeah. I, I, I'm totally in favor no, of I, 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 I think it should have been that way. That makes yeah. sense. I so think it makes sense. We, I know how we'll get more money out of you, so, we, so don't, don't look. Thank <laughs> 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 you. I do appreciate it. No, you said the mayor's always got a curve. Oh, I got a curve. You got a whole slice of coming out of um, Make sure you save those bottles and cans too. <laughs> well, we're out collecting now. Um, so, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, are we okay then? Do we, we have to do it? anything? Do we have to vote? Do we have to? I mean, we no. I, 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 no. We're fine. No, I think, we, I, I, think, I think what we're doing we're is fine. making sure that we know that the commitment yeah. is going to be a little bit more ongoing, and it could be extended, and it, it all depends on how we get that money in the, the subsequent right. years. I, I think the whole thing is, in my view, is. is Sort of the money, but I think it's the again. I, I think it's a great program. I think it's something that you know that they they have. I think it's a great thing we're they gonna, have for the police. So we're going to have a model body worn camera program. There are not a lot of agencies around here that ended up having as a cooperative relationship with their unions to get the to get the policy to be A to Z. Uh, well, thank them for us. Thank thank them for us for uh, you know. For, for going along with it, I think it shows their support, and I think it shows our yeah. support as well. So, you do nothing. Just, he, no, no, just, in fairness, I listen, I take an update to Adam, I gotta give him credit. credit. He helped us out at the 11th hour before he was going away on another vacation. So, uh, <laughs> got to keep <laughs> another <laughs> vacation. The GM got a little work out. <laughs> well, he sent me an email at 10 o'clock at night. GM, when was the last time you got an email from Kramer at 10 o'clock? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He's oh, 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 he he oh, 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 I didn't know you were I'll have to remember that, Brian. <laughs> oh, I'm not responding to yours. <laughs> well, Councilman Tornzello, the reason why we came here, in full disclosure, is yeah. that myself and the man in the GM got together. And I just, we just yeah. we all agreed we wanted to be right about board with everything. I didn't want you to be surprised if, every, if none of the grants work out come September and you go, wait a minute. 
So we appreciate that's it. That's why we're here. Okay. Thank, thank you. Appreciate it. it's great. I thank appreciate you. it. So thank you, Chief. Good okay. job. Thank you very much. And you're, you got our support. Now, if you could buy just a little bit more time, I have just a few items to go over. Uh, a couple of them I knocked off because they're in, in tonight's agenda. Um, Dave and I met with our lead line, lead service line replacement team uh, the other day. Uh, we're on schedule to what we're hoping for to be a construction period of May to September. Uh, but just to bring you up to speed, uh, we, we went through all the specs uh, that we're going to go out to bid the first week of March with the anticipation that we'll bring back a contractor to award uh, by this council on April 21st. We'll have a pre-con meeting with that contractor uh, immediately thereafter and then commence with the construction period for phase two of the lead line replacement uh, and that'll be from May through September completion. Uh, we have 17 applicants, actually I'm sorry, 16 applicants, one dropped out because they repaired it. Um, and we have about $250,000 to go through. So we looked, we plan to bid this individually uh, by the contractor with an idea of what the whole project is going to be. And then we'll determine if we do the full 16 or if we go out for a secondary phase uh, to maybe get a few other uh, people as well. Um, I don't know if there's any questions on that. Our heating uh, system has been challenging us these past few months. Um, we've been doing a lot of meetings with uh, Wait, engineers. Joe, please, please be correct. <laughs> What's that? The, the heating system hasn't been challenging for the last few months. <laughs> All right, the heating system has been challenging for the last 30 years. It has been. It has been, but we're really uh, we're taking some progressive steps oh, yeah. to do yeah, stuff. So the Romer's at 63, but the heat in here is 70. The building's 103 years old. Yeah. How about 103 years? <laughs> exactly. So, so we have met with uh, recently. The mayor and I met with uh, an engineer. Uh, we're looking to have a design uh, shortly. Uh, we're looking at um, heating system with the replacements of air conditioning as well, which is a separate standing units. Uh, so hopefully we'll be looking at that system by this council shortly as well. Energy consultant we're going to talk about shortly. Um, the planner. Uh, the ad went out in the paper on Sunday. Uh, we've had three responses. A uh, fourth one just popped up as we're sitting here tonight. Um, we have one person who is local to this municipality, uh, has a very diverse background. Uh, two people have very diverse backgrounds with GIS, our geographic information systems, which will be highly important when we start to pull that in-house with Dave, uh, so we can make sure we maintain all, all our uh, systems, which would be water, sewer, you know, hydrants, everything that we have here, we're going to be placing on that system. So we're I'm excited about that planner, hopefully being here uh, before the close of April. Uh, splash pad, I've been over for a couple of inspections throughout there uh, the past couple of weeks since we've broken ground. Uh, we're up to 72 yards of soil that's pulled out of the ground, and we're slowly starting to replace that. Uh, piers were supposed to be poured tomorrow. So with the snow, I'm not sure of what that puts us back, but we're still on schedule to have the pads, the two individual splash pads, uh, poured and turned over to the design team uh, who will be installing that as of March 15th. So we're, we're right on schedule there. Conduits in the ground for both electrical, water systems, and our drains. Um, so we're moving forward uh, in an expeditious manner there. And Gallo has been wonderful to work with. Uh, they call us when there's questions. We've been walking through change orders. We're only at two change orders at this point, both were like based on design, uh, but also one is for the camera systems for the police department where we're going to install uh, a, a, its own little light pole to illuminate that at night for safety reasons with a new camera system on that. So that was an added um, component that we were not planning for. Does that mean we can get rid of the barbed wire? No, the, the barbed wire's got to stay. <laughs> Sorry, Pete. I want the barbed wire out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. There's something a little more. It's like Dan Amora. No, yeah. it, it'll um, be a safe and fair. Uh, <laughs> lastly, uh, actually, two more items. Um, Bulk day, just to follow up with what the mayor said, is May 20th um, down at Hudson Shores. We will be charging, and Brian and I are working on like, revising the fee schedules to include uh, stuff for both Bulk day and other uh, changes in the uh, departments. Uh, lastly, I know we won't have it for this snowstorm. But we are working uh, with Verizon in a company called Snowpass, which is the software system. You alluded to how are we going to be tracking storms in the future. Um, but that'll actually tell us, it'll set up the grid, it sets up 
uh, where plows have, are going, where they've been, and as streets are done, you'll start to see some you know, coloring throughout it. So it's really a great tool, um, we think, that we can actually include in for garbage, for the sweeper, uh, as we go forward. And I've actually been in discussions, too, about our weed control. And they could actually take a picture and grid that, and as we eradicate the weeds, we at the reservoir, it, at the reservoir, we can start to show the progression uh, that we're doing. So that's even more exciting as well. So any money spent there, you can look at return on investment. This is going to be one of the things. As we're doing it, we'll start to see the weeds slowly back its way out. So that's mine. I wanted to. I think that's something that we can get in place before next winter. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Verizon does it. Uh, the wonderful thing about what we're partnering with, the police already have it on their equipment. So that grid and those patterns are already there. The city is already exposed in, in GIS data. Right. So now it's a matter of what's our Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday uh, systems for garbage. We got the whole thing that we can start designing planning routes or plowing routes. Um, this is to let you know where the garbage trucks are, not the residents know, right? This is actually going to be a cloud-based system where residents can go to it, not compromise the system in any way, shape, or form, but they can see where they are. Uh, that was the whole intent to make sure that the residents, especially for sweepers or for sweepers, for, plow, sweepers for plowers, snow, yeah. for plow plows yeah. as well, if they're if they're in one sec certain section, they can go to it. Not that that's going to answer all the I questions. Think that's, the I think that's great. That, that's going to relieve the police of driving the half an hour ahead with a bullhorn saying move your car, right? No, I don't or think that'll well, well, that that stop yeah. 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 And not everybody will yeah, have that. It's, 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 it's a partnership that what, we what, still what need. What about, like, Just you know, what's, your, yeah, we, yeah, what's, what's your cell number, Pete? I think it's a great tool. I'll, I'll leave it, it at that. And I think it'll make the police's job easier. It's a partnership. It's not going to eliminate it. Yeah. So that's all I have. So, um, any other questions there? You want to talk about SCADA? It's going to be. Oh, oh, you want to talk a little bit about it? Yeah. It's going to. Thank you. Good night, gentlemen. See you guys. The, uh, the, we, the bidding or the, uh, the, RF, the, the plans are out for the new SCADA system at the filter plant. Um, it's the computer system that runs the filter plant. We've been in discussion for the last year and a half or whatever. Um, March 9th, I think, is bid opening. Yep. Right? Yep. And then after that, we'll be getting a work. We did a walk. I did a pre pre bid walkthrough yesterday with the contractors and the plant. So we'll be sending our bids in. It's the ninth. Yeah, this day, right? Then March 9th it's coming in. So we have that plan for March 17th to award and get that contract uh, going yeah. that way. That's for the computer system. Yeah, it's for the up at the whole scheme yeah. system. It's kind of the brains of the plant. That's so great. Yeah. It needs it needs to be updated. It needs it, right? Yeah. Where, where are we with the the, the, the building to house the vehicles up there. Like that. for that building the lawsuit. The yeah. six bay. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not six anymore. I'm sorry. Oh, those eight. Ah, come on now. <laughs> um, We're waiting, right? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I have to myself to see where we'll be after this March meeting with Gilderland and then put it on a plan. I met with the town of Colony uh, to expedite the process as it goes forward. Um, I'm holding back on actually applying for it until we get the information as to what it's going to cost us uh, better, you know, from it. We haven't gotten that information from uh, Jeff from Weston and Sampson. It's okay. been a ballpark figure. I don't, want to, I, want to, I don't want to go to this board in a ballpark figure if we have to go through change orders and all that stuff yet. So, so. until after you meet with Gilderland, is that like... No, so once it goes to the, to the assessment review, Wherever that goes to our, our so judge. That, well, there'll be a trial in uh, uh, March. Oh, oh, okay. March. That's I was wondering if it had to do with the. Well, okay. it could, I mean, it could be a significant period of time beyond that. Yeah. Okay. How about structurally? What are we doing? Were we were we looking at doing all kinds of things structurally up there as well? Yep. That's the three million dollar grant. Yeah. yeah. Actually, part of the skate is going to fall into that. It's a part of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. We. But since Samson's been put some stuff together, there's going to be kind of different phases of that. Um, we build the filters yeah. and we do the flocculator and stuff like that. So we're, we're, we're still in the design phase of that. We're trying to figure out what's the best design that will fit our plan or something. So, concrete work. Right, right. There's a lot. Right, there's a lot. Yeah. Well, we're, we're trying to get a lot of mechanicals done first um, and then line the basins will help with the concrete. So there's different steps to that, but hopefully this summer we'll a new boiler. 
Um, I think they're working on specking that out. So this summer, pieces that will be important. Good. So when are we expecting the uh, the harvester to be delivered? Uh, they said to us to uh, like that week of the 15th, which is I think was that the third week in March. Okay. Yeah, the week of the 15th is a, is a Tuesday. So. Anything on a transporter yet? I was going to say the other pieces. Do we have any? No. I talked to the gentleman um, early part of the week regarding the one the municipality that's getting rid. He has not given me a price yet. He says he hasn't gotten been in contact with them. So um, okay. he's really my hope to try to get a transporter pretty quick. You know, with it. So. So there's a municipality that's selling one. Is that? Yeah. What so up north, far um, near the wherever uh, Champlain, whatever township is closest to that, uh, he said he sold them one and they, they stopped their program. So oh, okay. they're sitting with a transporter, stainless steel transporter. He thinks he could also get the uh, conveyor uh, as well um, because it's just sitting right now in their, in their yard. So I don't my, know hope is to, my hope is to acquire that. It's kind of like okay. uh, you so puts this machine, I understand picks it all up, yeah. picks it all up, right? It takes it and puts it on like a barge. Oh, okay. yeah. it's, it's a barge. It's yeah. like a barge. It's a barge. And then it's a barge. Okay. And then you can bring it all the way to the shore, and then it, it, it takes all loads, loads it onto the okay. whatever you're putting yeah. it onto. I sent in the specs of ours because typically, and we're, our shores are pretty shallow in some areas where we're going to offload this stuff, and um, the harvesters that they have lock into the transporter, they have right. lock into the conveyor belt. Um, that's what we saw up yes. at Lake Champlain. Yes, right. that's the kind of and thing. And the video we have on our We Do Boat is a uh, system. It's almost like a hydraulic system that drops legs into the water. So he says he's afraid of getting this. So he's not sure how we will have to connect to, you know, when we offload. But I explained to him what we plan on doing and sent him the video of how you offload it. He thinks he can make it work. So good. Okay. Because, because without those pieces, it's really not, I mean. It's not feasible. Right. And that yeah. was a. It's not efficient. Right. Yeah. Right. It's not, that, that Efficiency is what we're looking for. Yes. We have so much of it. That was a concern. So, okay. Uh, it was actually, it was, it's funny because I was, oh, I wasn't necessarily but thinking about all the docks we have down at the, uh, oh, yeah. and how they can be. Tied um, together and yeah. loose, and I'm going. Okay, I can get them. I can get them onto it, but how do I offload it yeah, from right. there? It's I haven't figured that out yet. Yeah. So maybe I'll take another nope. tap. <laughs> figure we'll it out. It they, 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 I'll, I'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. I will talk to that engineering firm. Yeah. <laughs> Those right. ours. Huh? Those ours. Knox. Nobody wants them. Oh. They've been lying. It's, it's got to be some sort of we adverse can, possession. We can talk. They've been down there for ten years. Do you need them? I might need for, we'll talk later, uh, with the hydro. Yeah, go, we'll, we'll talk about okay. it. Okay, all right. Um, so I do we have to do the minutes? Do we have to dispense with the minutes or anything? Oh, did we, 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 we didn't do the minutes, yeah. yeah. We didn't do the minutes, okay. I was going to wait until you. Okay, okay. Yeah. sorry. All right, anything else, Joe? No, we're all, all set. Right. Well then, uh, uh, then I'll uh, ask for the ask the, the clerk to read the minutes of the previous meeting. Uh, Mayor, I'll make a motion that we dispense with the reading of the minutes of the February tenth meeting. And I'll second that. Okay. Motion was made and second. Go ahead, please. Councilwoman Diamond. In favor. Councilman Tornsello. In favor. Mayor Patricello. In favor. We'll go into old business now. Your Honor, there is no old business on this evening's agenda. We'll do new business then, please. The first order of new business is a public hearing in regards to the CDBG CARE program. Okay. All right. Uh, then what I'll do is I'll um, hold a public hearing. We'll ask or we'll start a public hearing and I'll have who's making the presentation. Well, just in summary, and then Dave, uh, certainly if he has anything to add, uh, you all have a, a small PowerPoint presentation uh, to flip through. Uh, I'm not going to go through every page. Uh, the CDBG CARES Act, which is the Corona Aid Relief Economic Security Act, uh, put up through uh, the Department of Housing and Community Renewal. It's an eligibility um, grant that it up anywhere from 100,000 to 500,000. Uh, it's an open competitive grant that goes through cities, counties, and villages that will be competing with. Uh, it's specific to uh, small business. Uh, public sector, um, 
housing and improving quality uh, in public facilities. Um, we know we will be applying. I think the uh, grants are due by August um, 27th of, of this year. Um, Dave, I don't know if there's any other information to put, uh, put out at this point in time. No, I think that pretty much hits it. There, um, the only thing that I would discuss is if the miscellaneous, the proposal that we had in the back there, uh, potential application would be for the emergency generator here at the senior center. That is a proposed possible project. And the reason for that is that we, as a city, really do not have um, a facility in, case, in an event of an emergency um, for, you know, that would have a generator on it to house or hold people for a short period of time. Um, there really isn't any, any other facility. We have some backup generators for maybe the offices or like the firehouse, but that's about it. Um, but there isn't any, any other, let's say, facility except for uh, we put them in at the Housing Authority a few years ago for the community rooms, but they don't often meet that criteria because sometimes if you're thinking about it, if you're housing people for a long time, there's bathrooms, there's showers, there's sleeping facilities. But even at us, if we had a power failure or a, you know in, in a storm or a power failure here, there's really no place to bring anybody in. No, it, if we're out of power, we're out of heat. So yeah. we'll have to talk to Paul because maybe we'll want to add. Um, Maybe a building or two on the backup generation. I'm sure, we do that if, if you know based on the number. Okay, but that's the that's that was the plan and the reason for trying to put something in place here. No, that's a good idea. It makes sense. Okay. Do so you can close the public? All right. Anything? Anybody else have any questions on it? If not. We'll close the public hearing. Okay. We'll move on to the next resolution. The first resolution. First resolution is resolution number 14 for the year 2022. This is a resolution authorizing and approving the transfer of up to $70,000 from the Equipment Reserve HRA to be used for the purchase and upfitting of a 2022 Chevrolet Silverado 3500 HD. Your Honor, I'll make a motion. We move on resolution number 14 2022. And I will second it. Okay. Joe? Uh, okay. uh, this is uh, to purchase Dave's truck. Uh, and we were discussing last year if we didn't spend the money within the 2021 budget year, if we were not able to purchase the truck in that 2021 year, we were going to put the money into the reserve, uh, the equipment reserve, so that we could purchase it this year. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. And I'll give you the summary now, uh, 14, because it'll take care of it for 19. We went out to bid twice, once in 2021. We got no bids back under OGS Marketplace. Uh, we tried that again by making some changes suggested by the Chevy, uh, the local Chevy dealer, because what we were asking for is something that was well out of stock and we could never get it. That was the double door uh, vehicle. Um, we then went out again. And based on quantity and where to go, we would never get that vehicle again in this fiscal year, so we pared it down a little. Uh, Denoyer, who will award, award the contract to later, was able to go out and, under piggybacking, get a New York State bid, which saved us $7,800 on it. So we are still afforded um, state pricing, even though no one responded to that bid. Um, so that's why, and then we have in the 70, or 70000 not to exceed, is just in case we have to do anything to put current plow that we have sitting in our yard on this truck so they can do his uh, facility in the reservoir area. Okay. That's good. All right. No other questions? Call the roll. Councilwoman Dunn. In favor. Councilman Tornsello. In favor. Mayor Patricelli. In favor. Resolution number 15 for 2022 is a resolution determining that the Board of Leap CDBG Housing Rehabilitation Grant Program is a Type 2 action under the New York State Environmental Quality Review Act. Mayor, I will make a motion that we move on resolution number 15 for 2022. And I'll second that. Okay. And this is part of the paperwork needed to seek your uh, resolution for the grant um, so we can finalize the contract with the state. 
Good. Okay. Pull the roll. Councilwoman Dunn? In favor. Councilman Tornsello? In favor. Mayor Patricelli? In favor. Resolution number 16 for 2022 is a resolution designated Joseph Placevita as certifying officer and adopting the environmental responsibility certification. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll um, move that, I'll make a motion that we move on resolution number 16, uh, 2022. And I will second it. Okay, and I just need to read in the new resolution uh, the way it reads, and I apologize for that. Um, and it should state, a resolution designating the general manager as certifying officer responsible for all activities associated with the environmental review process for New York State CDBG project number 12010HR 302-21. And that was based on a council recommendation, so I apologize for that. And that's just certifying me as the certifying officer. Very good. Okay. Okay, pull the roll. Councilwoman Diamond? In favor. Councilman Torrencello? In favor. Mayor Patricelli? In favor. Resolution number 17 for 2022 is a resolution awarding a contract for the repairs to the City Hall soffit and gutter systems and authorizing Mayor Charles V. Patricelli to execute all required documents regarding the same. Mayor, I will make a motion that we move on resolution number 17 for 2022. And I'll second that. Uh, so this resolution is specific to the repairs and maintenance of the gutter and the soffit system around City Hall. Um, we had it won't, had gone out to bid. We had five uh, contractors bid on the project. 117,255 was the low bidder, and it went up from that point. And the highest one to bid this project was 206,708. Uh, our engineer, I'm sorry, our architect, uh, who drew up the specs and plans. Uh, witnessed the openings and suggested uh, Gallo Corporation here at 15 Lincoln Avenue as the contractor to award the project, and that's what you're, is here before you tonight. And they can start whenever the weather is good enough to start? Yes, and part of that's going to be, well, part of its exterior and is also included in there is the internal roof gutter, oh. which is why we had uh, Jordan's office exposed for probably five or six years. Uh, so we're going to be snapping a line all the way from the third floor to the second floor, replacing it with green uh, piping, you know, gutter with a fern code, connect that to, and close everything right up like it should be. Long time coming. And then we move Amanda and Jenny into that office so we can get them working uh, collectively together. The, yeah, the long time coming is right. Yeah. And, this, and this money was um, uh, part of the, uh, the, the grant from... Uh, Senator Congressional's office. Yes, and we reallocated some from a, a former grant as well. Mm -hmm. That's great. Very good. All right. That's Anything good. else? We'll that's, actually, that's good news. Councilwoman Diamond? In favor. Councilman Torrencell? In favor. Mayor Patricell? In favor. Resolution number 18 for the year 2022 is a resolution selecting Centrica as the energy consultant for the City of Waterloo and authorizing Mayor Charles V. Patricelli to execute all required documents regarding such activities. So Your Honor, I'll make a motion that we move on resolution number 18. And for the uh, record again, uh, the full name of that business is Centrica Business Solutions Services, Inc., uh, located at 3 Roselle Drive in Boston Lake, which is in your resolution. Um, this was a no-cost no award at this point as we go through the contract period. Uh, but the project is for specific to street lights. We've been after this for a couple of years as well. Um, I know um, we were trying to get through before COVID hit, and we kind of sat idle. Um, and I knew it took me a little bit of time to get back to this. Uh, but we had two proposals. One was from the Siemens Corporation, and the other was Centrica. Um, I had a person on our committee to select that actually does um, this engine, uh, energy work at CERBC, the Capital District Regional Planning Commission. And when we looked at this collectively, we were five points off between the two. Uh, but the woman uh, had worked uh, creatively and successfully with Centrica. And Centrica, just based on the process, was the award in one anyway as the winner. So we think we're heading in the right direction on that one. Okay. Sounds good. Well, it's been a long time coming. 
another one. Not, not that I've been pushing for it. Uh, uh, <laughs> before, but, but that's it. It's still a difficult <laughs> process with National Grid. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, this is not something that tomorrow is going to be. Well, the one good thing about Centric is um, they actually have someone on staff who's retired from National Grid who's involved in the conversion process with um, the lighting systems. So um, we're hoping that this brings it in uh, to the process to expedite uh, the process as well. Yeah. That was one of the reasons why they scored a little higher, too. Not Kathy Bean, is it? No. Oh, okay. Okay, good. Pull the roll, please. Councilwoman Diamond? In favor. Councilman Tornsello? In favor. Mayor Patricello? In favor. Resolution number 19 for the year 2022 is a resolution approving the purchase of a 2022 Chevrolet Silverado 3500 HD with NAPI service from Denoyer Chevrolet. Mayor, I will make a motion that we move on resolution number 19 for 2022. And I'll second that. So just simply to go over the, uh, the quote on this, uh, again, it was a piggybacking with state contracting. The cost of the chassis was $51,890. We got $7,800 off. Uh, Dave went for the Cadillac of all body uh, systems on the back, uh, $17,000. Uh, $500, but with that reduction, we're well, at the six. Hyde service body really, yeah. what you really went for it. Yeah. Went for it. Whatever, whatever that, that, that is. Bell that's what it was. That's what it really was. Yeah. That special, <laughs> what it got stainless steel? Yeah. Yeah. Was that yes. special yes. leather that they had in those like, Corinthian, Corinthian leather? leather. Yeah. 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 It's like my truck. It's my guy. Corinthian leather in there? You got red speckled paint. You got everything. All right, all right. But total cost of that is $61,787.50. Um, and I believe that resolution reads for the same price uh, for it. And the extra money in the early resolution uh, was to help us build uh, the plow frame and everything so we can have a plow on that one as well. And moving forward, whatever truck we do buy that's four-wheel drive, we'll have a plow uh, equipped with it so we can make sure we always have enough equipment. In the that's fall great. Winter. We already have the plow that was on the old white truck. I don't remember the old white truck we had. It's a V plow. It's still in good shape. We just the truck we got rid of the truck mm -hmm. and they had the frame on it so oh, okay. we got to retrofit yeah. the new truck so one of the things we experienced with this um last storm the ice storm and the first one that we had using the trucks this year is the v plows uh, because they're uh, Joe, can you speak up? oh i'm sorry because the v plows they're they weren't as balanced as a typical push plow which is the straight plow uh, we know we're wearing blades faster than we typically would so any vehicle, we had conversation, Dave and Hank and I, uh, to rethink the process of feed plows in the futures and go back to those straight because once it goes onto the road, uh, you're not you're not in an off balance, right. uh, if you will. Um, so we're going to consider that going forward as well. We're already we're already low on our feed plows, which are the two small trucks. So, and that's the cutting blade at the bottom you see typically. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, twice, Hank said they're twice as expensive. And twice as expensive to replace. The twice is expensive and you can't flip them and, and reuse the back side. That's right, yeah. Yeah. So, so it calls out to uh, to the town colony so I can talk to uh, Matt up there to see how they're doing with their replacements and what we need. It's, good to, have a, it's good to have a couple of them, but yeah. the whole fleet needs plows. Right. You can right. triple your budget and yeah. plow the place. Very good. Okay. Good. Pull the roll. Councilwoman Dunn? In favor. Councilman Torricello? In favor. Mayor Patricelli? In favor. Your Honor, that concludes the new business on this evening's agenda. Anything further on appropriations in the county? Um, did we want to call a public hearing to use the repair reserve to fix the 19th Street light in front of Dunkin' Donuts in the Hudson Shores Park? Oh, yes, we should. If that's where we're pulling it from, we should to call a public hearing for can't do it for March 3rd because it won't be enough time to publish. Um, so it would have to be for the March 17th. 24th. I don't think we have a meeting the 17th. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the word. I apologize. Oh, you're, 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 okay. you're right. Right on. St. Patrick's Day? Yeah. Yeah, 24th. Yeah. What are we fixing? Uh, there's a light in front of Dunkin' Donuts. Um, 
think it's tilted or something to that effect. I, I actually don't know. Okay. Uh, and then there's another light in Hudson Shores Park that's not working that we need to. Is that the one that was hit? That would be not working. The one in, in front of Dunkin' Hudson Donuts. Shores. No, the one to Hudson Shores. Yeah. Yeah. Again, don't I, smile, I Amanda. Don't know. Oh, okay. You had the top in the. Um, no. There's a top in the. I, uh, that one I already got fixed. Oh, just that just, that just blew off. Oh, okay. okay. I, I think that we're talking about the one down by the uh, under the bridge. People come to me with numbers, not the. Is that the one? <laughs> yeah, I think that's the one. I don't. I don't know anything about it either. I, yeah. I think it was. It was. Hit. It's seventy-eight hundred dollars. Would mm. we need to call a public hearing to fix lights? This was uh, the so it's, reserves. it's because we're using oh, the repair okay. reserves to pay okay. for yes, you're using items. Okay. Uh, we're just so early in the year that I don't want to keep dipping into our parks. Was that fund for repairs? Uh, let me ask you a question on that on that light. It, it was hit with a vehicle. Could, is that a? I, I don't know. I, someone said that the light was out. I don't know what light it is. Uh, someone gave me the price of seventy eight hundred dollars. That is the extent of my knowledge on the light. That was hit with a vehicle. Could that be uh, a property damage claim on the on the on the insurance? Should we could certainly check. Yeah. Sure. I don't yeah. see why not. I mean, yeah. there's got to be a deductible. I don't know what the deductible is, but we can you mean, we should be thousand. able to get it. Do we have it? Do we know? Was it our vehicle? We know, no, we know who did it. Did the police take yeah. a report? Yeah. Did the police take a report? Yeah, it was our vehicle. Oh, that was our vehicle. Wait, it was our vehicle? Yeah. Which one are you talking about? Wasn't it? Which one are you talking about? The one down at the end, the, the pole light. Is that the one I'm yeah. assuming? Uh, is under the bridge? Yeah. Under the bridge. The Duncan Dolan's one was that. No, 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 no. no, I'm talking about the one under the bridge. Yeah. The one under the bridge was hit by one of our vehicles. Yeah. I don't think they're going to pay us. We can look at that, but I can't. I don't believe that they would pay us for something we cause. Right for our own claim. And if they do, let's just drive around and hit everything. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I, I don't know. I just don't. I, I, if somebody. Living down the street hit it, that would be different. We could make a claim against that person's policy. Yeah. I don't believe we're going to be in a position to make a claim against ourselves. There's something that just strikes me wrong about that. Okay. You can make a phone call, though. Yeah. Yeah, but people sue their own homeowners insurance. Like if they slip and fall on their own, they don't think. I don't know. Different. I shouldn't say it. I don't know. I, I don't know. But I, I thought you could. I thought it was a damage that it could. It was an accident. You know. So. All right. If you can look into that, that would be okay. There's cool. during a snow emergency. Right. No, there was no emergency. It was just the odd and even hit. Oh. All right. If there's nothing else on their appropriation accounting, we'll set the, the public hearing up. Uh, before we go into the public comment period, if there is any, uh, I, I want, we also have a window bid. Uh, the windows bid date is out. Yes, I apologize. I don't know um, right offhand. Let me see if I can find it's it. Next, it's next. It's, it's coming back. It's, it's, come, it's, it's coming out. But the window, the re window replacement for City Hall is now going to be going out the bid. Yes. So we're in the process of looking at that as, as well. Uh, but great. it'll be sometime in March. Do we know when it's going to come back? Because we might want to also call public hearing on using the reserve fund for that as well. Okay. That was one of those other costs that we can look uh, at. I have the the dates. I don't know what the what they are, but I'll I'll look see if I can remember if it. I don't uh, just let you know. Remind me. I know the bid dates and I know what the return dates. So that think are in well. Okay. Yes. A couple other uh, small items I wanted to just mention to you is that we're, we've, I've met with uh, a few people and we're talking about the, a grant that's under the New York State Canal System and that is going to work on doing some work at the, uh, at Hudson Shores Park with the, with the docking system, especially for the, um, um, the kayak areas and any of the, any of the work that we need to be done for there. Also some uh, improvements that are down at the park. That might be miscellaneous that we can add to, uh, you know, to the park, and because I think it's a twenty-four thousand dollar grant, up to a twenty-four thousand dollar grant from New York State Canal System. So working with um, Lindsay on it, Paul, and we're going to pull together some work on it and then go from there. On. Excellent. Is so, there a match on that? There is a match. It's a fifty. I believe it's a fifty percent match. So. Put twenty-four in. So it's it is looking at 
but we don't have an idea what that is. Also, Joe and I met with uh, people from RPI. Um, they are looking to re re uh, restart their program for the canal or for their uh, crew teams. They were asked politely to come down and clean out the, the boathouse and get it organized. Um, they, they understand that they're going to have a crew down there, crew crew down there uh, soon to start that. You know, so that work Excellent. cleaned up the, the you know the, the boathouse and getting it going. We also have been involved with that the same canal system grant is got some money in it for a, another part that has a um, an event um, pro a part to it component to it and so that can be we're asking RPI or another I have a, another contact with a crew team in um, Walston Spa area that might be looking to uh, have some kind of regatta in there of some sort again it's some, not just another event that they can do and they can you know generate some revenue but we'd have to make sure that the uh, the docks are in, in place and stuff like that but for the kayaks uh, I think Joe is talking to Louise on scheduling yes. a date, but we yep. expect those docks to be put in by the end of March or the very early, uh, first week or so of April. Correct. Hopefully, when Louise comes, and then RPI will pay half of the installation, or the, you know, the, and then we pay the same because we normally did in the past. Um, but they, and I've also asked for RPI to do some other uh, improvements that they can handle down there as well, and I think that's going to come out all right. And then one other thing is just finally is the fire and ice is still on for tomorrow. Um, you know we, but it, that's you know it's going to have a some ice. a lot a lot of snow. <laughs> a lot of snow. It's, 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 it's the ambiance. Right. Absolutely, right. it's ambiance. So um, from all indications, um, I got to say JP has been doing a phenomenal job in organizing it and yes. getting some of the things done. Yes. Yeah. So you know uh, I believe all the pits are fire pits were sold. Yes. Uh, we have. Probably somewhere around, he told me today about out of the 200 shirts or packages, I believe there are about 50 left, uh, which might be generated more for between tomorrow and Friday, or, you know, Friday night. So I think we've, we've done very well on it. Uh, but I think it would be a great event to to uh, bring the community back together, back out of COVID. I think that's the whole intent of the whole program. So, great. other than that, I don't think I have anything else. You gave us these. I did. Uh, those are the copies of the 2019 and 2020 audited financial okay. statements. Okay. While you're while you're talking about that, has Moody's um, been contacted? Yes, I sent them uh, when I got the electronic copies. Uh, and the letters that Trump's firm would give him, right? Are expecting a call a uh, with problem. them, but I do not have a scheduled date. Okay. Okay. And Joe, what are these? That's the two uh, sets of plans that we got from the architect. If you guys want to you know, share those, we got. Um, you send those, didn't you? Send them. I thought I saw those, didn't you? Yeah, there is a there is a, a USB that came with them that I got to load up the documents okay. and then send it to you. Right. For the proposed course building, the proposed course. Oh, 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 I thought that was for the. Yeah, you said something for the work so, that's going to be done at City Hall, stop and stuff like that. I thought you said something like that. So yeah, is this one full there. set, Joe, or two full sets? There's two full sets. I have a third one for the file. I mean, I could, okay. I could let somebody use those, but I just want to keep one for the file. I'll share mine with you, Pete, after you look up the uh, State of the City. <laughs> <laughs> it's be brown by the time. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. <laughs> okay. If there's nothing else in front of the council, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. Oh, no. Oh, no. oh, we have to open the public comment. Oh, all right. Yeah. Well, uh, I'll let, we'll open up the public comment then, Joe, or uh, uh, Dave. At this time, the council has authorized a public comment period. If you wish to address the council, please step forward, state your name and address for the record, and you'll have two minutes to discuss any items you wish. I have seen no comments or anybody asking to have any comments. So I'll, I'll close the public comment period and ask for a motion to adjourn. We're going to make a motion to adjourn. We're going to make a motion to go into executive session. No, that uh, that was my apology. That was that's not bad. Yeah. Okay, no I'll make session. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Oh, I'll second it. Okay, call the roll. Councilwoman Donna. In favor. Councilman Tornasello. In favor. Mayor Patricello. In favor. 